lovely uh, host said, my name is Sara. And I'm here on this stage today to tell you about the current state of higher education, why we need to change design education. I also want to tell you uh, how we've been doing that with the new digital school and why this all matters to you. So just a little bit of context about myself. It's a really big picture of myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm the learning designer at the new digital school, but this is the first time I have the word designer on my job title. I've had jobs, I come from a, a business man management background, and I've had jobs like financial auditor. So who here knows what a financial auditor is? Great, there's one sad person there that knows what that is. Everyone else has a much better life not knowing what that is. And I've also organized events and done digital marketing. But it was when I realized that there were uh, people out there solving problems based on human needs that and that those people were called designers, that I fell in love with design. And fast forward, and here I am now on this stage, trying to live up to my job title. Most of the time, not knowing what I'm doing. So because of the new digital school, we've talked to a lot of people about their uh, education, and about education in general. And there's one topic that keeps coming up, and that's frustration. Students or people talking about their uh, university experiences are frustrated, employers are frustrated, and teachers as well. So, starting with students. Um, students just feel that they are unprepared. The, some people say, I've learned more in one week at my first job than I did in five years of university or three years of university. And this is really frustrating, and when they get to their first job, they don't even know what they are supposed to do. And this happens because universities have, are based in programs. They're one-size-fits-all kind of programs. And they also transmit knowledge that's based on universal truth. And so creativity and curiosity and exploration is repressed to produce compliance. So universities are putting people in boxes that don't exist anymore, or probably never existed. And also employers. So I'm curious to know who, who of you, how many of you, uh, work at companies that are struggling to hire? No one? There's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So th this topic comes up a lot when we talk with companies. Uh, so people don't have the skills that they need in this digital field, on digital world. And when I say skills, I don't mean just technical skills. Those are lacking, definitely, but also social or soft skills like knowing how to defend your work or knowing how to collaborate with people from other uh, backgrounds. And so employers spend, end up spending a lot of time and money training these people. And why does this happen? Because academia is static, curriculums are static. And it can take a long time to update a curriculum, sometimes four years. How can we wait four years to update a curriculum in digital fields uh, when things change in four months, in four days sometimes. And finally, teachers. They are frustrated with the lack of, of uh, engagement from the students, probably because of the reasons that I've mentioned before, but also because of the bureaucracy and the processes they need to go through at universities. So, universities are too focused on productivity nowadays, so diplomas, grades, uh, academic papers being published, and all this is measured based on quantity and not on quality. And how, why do they do this? Because they need to, to go up the rankings to secure funding. And how can they focus on what's really important, being their students and their learning experiences? So, this frustration goes even up a level. This, this quote is from a, a, a report from the EU, uh, and they ask this question, can traditional higher education in its current state deliver the high levels of skills that Europe needs to, to, to meet the world's greatest challenges? Well, we believe the answer is no, and that's why we believe we need to change design education, especially uh, uh, digital design education, but not only. So, uh, I don't know who of you know the work of Sir Ken Robinson. Uh, if you don't know him, I, I strongly suggest you go on TED and find his talks, because they're amazing, really insightful if you're into education, and he's really, really funny, so go, go ahead and, and find him. 
So he says that public schools are uh, based on these three key premises, teachers, a fixed curriculum, and assessment. And we believe this creates a, a, a linear experience, almost like a factory. So the teacher delivers the curriculum to the students, who then get assessed on that curriculum, just to make sure that everyone memorized that information equally. And this is like a factory line, exactly like uh, when the educational system was created back in the Industrial Revolution. So I believe we need to move from a mechanical system to a more organic one, to a learning experience. Because nowadays, we don't just learn without teachers. As, as Daniel was saying, the, we learn with everything. We learn with experiences, we learn from each other, we learn from Google, we learn from videos, and we need to incorporate that in our schools. That was a surprise. And instead of having teachers, a fixed curriculum and assessment, we believe we need to change that with a different set of principles. And what, uh, what we believe those principles are is being student-centered, industry-led and community-based. So what does this mean? Student-centered. Also, Sir Ken Robinson, he says that we spend a whole lot of time uh, talking about education without even discussing learning. So we need to move the focus in education from teaching to learning and put the, the, the student at the center of all decisions and efforts. And when we do this, a one-size-fits-all kind of curriculum doesn't work anymore because everyone is different, everyone has uh, different needs and interests. So we, we, we think it's important that every curriculum or the curriculum is tailored to the student. And we go even further to say that it should be the student designing their own curriculum. And as I said earlier, it's, this is especially important when we're talking about digital design such because it's so broad and dynamic to be uh, put into a fixed curriculum, a traditional curriculum. And industry-led, the students need to learn the skills that the industry needs. And because of this, the learning experience needs to happen in an environment that is, that is as close to the real world as possible. Because we need to be comfortable with change, we need to keep learning all the time. That's how it will happen at work, right? And industry we will, will keep evolving and only evolving fast, faster and faster. And finally, community-based. Just because we're putting the focus on the students' individuality, that doesn't mean they need to go through the journey alone. They should have learned how to collaborate with the supports of peers and mentors from as many backgrounds as possible. And as uh, just, just in earlier, he, he touched on this a little bit. It's also important to, to say that um, we have a responsibility as people working in tech towards the community. The things we design and the things we build have an impact on people, a really strong impact. And the students need to realize that. They need to realize the impact of their decisions. So, now that I've told you the current state, how we believe uh, it should be, or how it should change, I want to tell you a little bit about the new digital school and how we're doing this change. And applying the principles that I told you before. So, very quickly, the new digital school is an international di digital design school. We're currently located in Porto, in Portugal. We run a 12-month program that's in person full-time for a small class of up to 15 people, so that we can keep the, the personalization. And instead of a fixed curriculum, we created a framework that helps the students decide what is the skill set that they want to focus on. And our job in this school is just to facilitate that experience. And how do we do that? We run uh, master classes and webinars with industry experts. Some of our guests uh, have included uh, Vitaly Friedman, co-founder and editor-in-chief of Smashing Magazine, uh, Aaron Walter, formerly at MailChimp and now VP of Design Education and Envision. And this is very important for our students because they get direct access to the, uh, these experts. They expand their network, but they also learn from their experiences and their stories. They get a lot more than technical skills. And more than learning with, with the experts, they learn by doing through projects. And these can be client projects, real client projects, or uh, personal projects. What's important is they are based on real constraints and that they are um, out in the world. 
Um, we also made sure we involve the community and uh, the design and tech community so that we can uh, learn from each other's knowledge, but also uh, leverage the connections between students and professionals. So, for example, this event that you see here in the picture uh, is, uh, uh, was an event about scaling uh, design teams. And this was an event targeted to design leaders and managers. And of course, our students, they won't be uh, scaling a design team just, just as they leave the school. However, by having these connections with these people, they will hopefully understand better how it is to, to manage a team and they will be more aware of the challenges. And a lot more than, than growing as professionals, our students are growing as individuals. So we like to tell uh, Juan's story, this guy here in the picture. Uh, he comes from a sports science background. It's completely different from design, but he always loved this, this, this discipline. And he's evolved in amazing ways. He used to be really shy, really insecure, and he now leads the uh, team, uh, meetings with clients. He presents the, the work within, uh, of the entire team to clients. And most of all, the other day he said, uh, I don't know where the future will bring me, but I'm 100% sure I will figure it out. And this was very, very important to us because this is what we want our students to realize is that they don't have all the answers, but they can get there. And finally, being part of a group uh, is very important for this, this um, evolution. And we're trying to build uh, a culture of uh, openness and trust inside the studio, but also in surf classes, in student retreats and other gatherings. So, Judging by the previous image of the sea, you might think this has been really easy, just a walk in a park or walk in the beach. But it has mostly been this for the, uh, for the last nine months. We've learned a lot, and we mostly we learned that um, we can play, plan as much as we want. We will always find the problem when we we'll go back to square zero. So uh, we had to embrace an iterative mindset. And we learned, uh, we have some key uh, learnings from that, that process and we, I want to share them with you today. So, we realized that to learn, our students and ourselves, we had to unlearn first. Uh, there were moments when they came to us, or first, they didn't show up. Like, said, there's nothing on the schedule, so why should I show up? There's nothing to do there, there's no class. Or they would be there and they would ask us, so what do I do next? Tell me what to do. I'm like, I don't know, what do you want to do? And we wanted them to be able to, to look at a step forward and to, to be self-starters. But what we didn't realize was that after 16 years of traditional education, at least in Portugal, uh, 16 years is the standard, the, it was the first time someone was, someone was telling them that they could do whatever they want in, a, in an educational set, uh, setting. So they had to unlearn those mental models and we had to facilitate that unlearning. And it took time. And to connect, the, the, this second learning connects to the first one because our students are very uh, autonomous. They can decide if they show up to the activities, they can decide uh, if they want to participate in the projects or not, if it's important for them. And that sometimes uh, clashes with the accountability. And when I say accountability, it's the accountability towards the group, but also towards the individual. Because when you don't have a test at the end of the month where you will prove that you've, if you've learned or not, it's very easy to say, oh, today I don't feel like doing that, I'll just stay in bed. But you need to keep yourself accountable. You need to find uh, ways to keep uh, motivated and to motivate the group. And we're still struggling with this, but now we, now we know that we need to keep in mind the, the, this problem. And finally, expect the unexpected. And this sounds like a big cliche that you would put on an Instagram quote or something like that. But it is important to say that once you give the steering wheel to, to others, you no longer have control. You can control what they do with them. And uh, uh, our students have evolved in amazing ways. And we like to think that we've done something for that to happen. But it was mostly them taking advantage of the conditions uh, that they had. And this is very, very important that we realize that we're just letting them be. 
So, I've told you a little bit of the current state, how it could change. I showed you an example. But we didn't cover uh, where this need for change came from, right? And I think I have the answer. And now I don't think it's the piano cat that's the answer. But the internet. It, it represents the internet. And after all, it's the reason why we're all here in this room today. And nowadays, we have access to endless amounts of information to explain the world around us. We also are exposed to so much diversity of thought, of experiences, of people. And this is really complex to, to, to understand and to distill. And yet, we need to make decisions as we go all the time. And that brings a lot of uncertainty. And uncertainty can be uncomfortable, doesn't it? However, the key skill nowadays to succeed is to be comfortable with that uncertainty and to approach the unknown with uh, curiosity and flexibility to know more. And this is my biggest frustration. Design schools are producing pixel pushers and not nurturing problem solvers. Anyone working in tech, anyone in this room nowadays has a responsibility. But more than that, has an opportunity to change the way we uh, work, the way we interact, the way we live. And uh, design students and people working in tech in general need to understand that. And what we need in education is not an evolution, but a revolution. And that's why I'm here today, to, to, uh, to invite you to join this revolution. Why don't you uh, challenge your local universities? Why don't you run educational programs at your companies using these principles? Let's do this together, just spread the word. I truly believe that if we do this alone, we we'll, might go faster, but if we do it together, we'll go further. So let's do it together. Thank you.